so reconciliation, reconciliation is rebuilding trust in a relationship where trust has been damaged. There, you want to build this bridge of reconciliation. There are four planks in this bridge. So the first of those is to decide whether you want to reconcile. We don't have to reconcile. It's a choice that we have. So, so people decide if they want to reconcile. The second is to discuss. So decide, discuss, everything is going to begin with a D because this is disgusting, right, uh, all these, uh, uh, these acrostics. But uh, so, <coughs> so it's a discussion. So discussions involve reproaches. A reproach is to ask for an explanation. You can ask in a harsh way or you can ask in a way that kind of brings a confession about. After a reproach is made, the person gives an account of their behavior. The wrongdoer gives an account of their behavior. The accounts are of four types possible. The most toxic account is a denial. A denial says, I didn't do anything wrong. Im implies, and you are stupid for thinking so. Okay? So denials are pretty toxic. Second, and also fairly toxic, is a justification. Justification says, yeah, I did wrong, but it's because of what you did. In other words, the real blame is yours. It's not mine. You're responsible for this. This is not a happy, um, going to produce a happy outcome usually either. The third type of account is an excuse. So an excuse is telling mitigating circumstances. Now excuses actually turn out to be good if they're timed right and bad if they're timed wrong. The, time, the timing is wrong if a reproach happens and you immediately say, well, yeah, I did wrong, but I had this excuse and this excuse and this excuse. You know, because once you say, but, the person just basically turns their hearing off and they don't hear anything. So there is a good time to give it the mitigating reasons why you did what you did. It's not then. The best, uh, most productive is to give a good confession. Confession admits responsibility. I have this acrostic confess to help people remember. So the steps to this, which I did not tell them, C-O-N-F-E-S-S, -S, I just named the steps, okay? But the steps are to confess without excuse, offer an apology, note the other person's pain, the em empathize with the other person, you know, do this because you're valuing the other person, um, offer restitution to the other person, say, I'm never going to do this again, I'm going to try never to do this again, and then finally seek forgiveness. Can you forgive me? At that point, that's a good time to say, would it help you forgive me to know some of the things going on in my life? If they say no, fine. If they say yes, then that's the time that mitigating uh, responses can help. Okay, once a confession is made, the other person has to deal with it. They can deal with it by basically saying, I accept that confession, I forgive you decisionally. They won't forgive you emotionally right away. It'll take time. Or they can say, I need more time to deal with this. Or they can refuse to forgive you. So in therapy, what you're trying to do is help them take more time and make that decision on their own and not force it in therapy. So that's where the reach, the five steps to reach forgiveness can be taught during that time. The third plank in the bridge to reconciliation after decision and discussion is to detoxify the negativity that's gone on in the relationship. Gottman talked about that cascade toward divorce. And basically what you're doing is you're moving people back up the cascade 
into a relationship that doesn't have as much negativity in it. That's a lot just kind of regular marriage counseling. And then the fourth step is to promote devotion, to promote love. Everything up till that point has been dealing with the negative and reducing the negative. Now you want to go beyond just getting back to zero and deal with the positive. So that's a quick overview of that bridge to reconciliation. There's a lot of interpersonal interaction between the therapist and the, and the clients in that section. 